Here. 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 Wonderful. And with uh, all meetings, we'll uh, go ahead and start with a moment of silent prayer. Amen. We have someone pull the door shut and we'll go ahead and uh, say the Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag. Thank you, Richard. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item up uh, to uh, for the council is uh, minutes of the December 16th, uh, 2014 City Council meeting. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Mr. Lee. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as listed and authorize the mayor to sign. Second. We have first and second. Any questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. And next is discussion and approval of the Appropriations Ordinance 15-01 in the amount of $770,332.44. Uh, point out, you know, almost half that 300000 is for our special projects. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I'd like to make a motion to approve Appropriations Ordinance 15-01 in the amount of $770,322.44. Second. We have first and second. Are there questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, city re requested appearances. Uh, we have a special presentation by the Bel Air Lions Club uh, to the Bel Air uh, Police Department. So I would uh, welcome Lions and uh, Chief Atterbury. Don't be shy. Uh, my name is Gary O'Neill. I'm the uh, president of the Bel Air Lions Club. And on behalf of the Bel Air Lions Club, we'd like to make a presentation this evening to the uh, police department. Uh, before I do, for the vast audience that is watching this uh, on Channel 7 tonight, <laughs> I would like to get a little bit of publicity in for the Bel Air Lions Club. Um, Bel Air Lions Club is part of, of Lions Clubs International, which began in 1917 in Chicago, which is, we are a service organization. Currently, uh, membership is uh, over a million four worldwide with over 3,000 clubs worldwide. And all we do is, is do service for the community. And you can go on all the websites and see what percentage of service funds that are raised by organizations go back into the community. You'll see that the Lions is 100% of all the funds that we raise go back to the local community. All administrative costs come out of the dues that we pay to belong to the Lions Club. So you can go online anytime you want. 100% of what we raise through our service projects uh, that we do in the local community go back to the community. Uh, this year we had uh, some outstanding fundraisers. Uh, we sold uh, at the rec center, we sell uh, snow cones up there to raise funds that go back to the community. Uh, we have 4th of July, we sold fireworks to raise funds, and then we have our Taste of Italy in November, a dinner that we have to raise funds. And I'm proud to say that uh, after paying for the materials for the park shelter that we're building up at the uh, Bel Air Rec Center, we had some funds left over this year. And we were fortunate in October this year at our monthly meeting, we try to have at least one speaker each month come to our, our luncheon meetings. Uh, Chief uh, Atterbury came up to our meeting and made a presentation to us and said that he was uh, looking for some body cameras for the police department. And the reason for these body cameras is to show the professionalism that the Bel Air police exhibit every day and we have it on record and, it, and it's an outstanding thing. So our board met uh, in December 
and with the funds that we had left over that we felt we could expend, uh, we we're going to make a presentation. This is Miss Grace Neal, and this is incoming President uh, Richard Caldwell. Would like to make a presentation to Chief Darrell Adbert. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Here we yeah. go. These are uh, two of the best, according to the chief, and he's going to tell you about these cameras, body cameras, uh, that can be purchased for the department. And those two things he's holding in his hands there are $1,200. So that is our donation to the city, to the police department this year. Uh, the police department uh, appreciates the Lions Club. As you heard the mayor speak earlier this evening, the Lions Club is involved in a lot of things. They have their hands in all of our community uh, efforts. Um, the, uh, the cameras here are designed to be worn by officers. Uh, <clears throat> consists of a base unit and a camera. And that camera can be placed uh, in a number of different positions on the body. A lot of the officers carry them up on their head so that wherever they look, that camera is looking in the same spot. And that is important for policing today because now more than ever before, uh, there's accountability. And officers want to be accountable to you, the citizens of Bel Air. Uh, the, the uh, officers want to demonstrate how professional that they are uh, and they're happy to do that we recently had an opportunity to view one of these uh, tapes after a complaint and i'm proud to say the officer was very professional the attorney that looked at that tape was pleased to see what he saw because that officer was very professional in how he conducted the stop the allegations that were made were false and we were able to see on video that they were false and that's where it ended so uh, for for the Lions Club thank you very much we appreciate you for this donation and we will put it to good use thank you Wonderful. Thank you guys so much for uh, everything that you do. And like I <coughs> Chief mentioned yeah, earlier, just at, at every event, it uh, seems like you guys are there. So thank you so much. Okay, we'll move on with our meeting now. Uh, citizens' concerns. Is there anybody uh, in the audience uh, that wishes to address council tonight? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to uh, reports. Um, I have nothing formal to report tonight, but just want to uh, uh, say uh, Happy New Year. Welcome to 2015, everybody. Looking forward to a great year with everybody up here. Um, it is a new year. Um, if uh, we continue to get uh, different types of press, um, I, I uh, noticed in the Vite magazine there was a big two-page spread about the Jason Perez opening that uh, with a lot of pictures of Bel Air people in it and mentioning Bel Air. Uh, that, so that continues to get uh, play. Um, I think uh, the packet that council received, the, the letter that was in our packet, we received a, one of our uh, Lieutenant Fox, I believe, received a, a nice letter. Um, and I don't know how many people ever write a thank you note to a police officer for <laughs> what it was. So I think that speaks uh, highly of the professionalism. Um, that is there so uh, but nothing formal to report uh, we'll move on to uh, council members we'll start with uh, Dr. Becker well I don't have much to report tonight since we've been enjoying the holidays and I just hope everybody had wonderful holidays and I would just like to echo your sentiment tonight in your message that I too believe that we're going to have an even better year in 2015 than we did in 2014 and that was a pretty good year yeah. so looking forward to a wonderful year and thankful for all the good things that are happening here well I'll echo the uh, the thoughts about uh, the exciting new year and hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas and New Year's uh, celebrations uh, 
Uh, I will be attending the SCAC meeting this Saturday. I'm planning on going to that. That's scheduled, I believe, in Mount Hope. So I'm going to be mm -hmm. trying to go and do that. And then I've got my uh, Sedgwick County Planning Commission meeting. The, the 2035 uh, Steering Committee is meeting tomorrow. And that's our last full meeting where we're going to be going through the document. And then after that, we, it finally is going to be going out to have everybody look at it to, before it goes out to the public in a couple few months. But it's going to go to the city of Wichita staff, county staff, and other groups to, to do some <coughs> review before it goes out. So this will be our last full meeting. So I'm excited about not needing to go downtown every two weeks for meetings. So. I bet. Thank you. So done. No formal report, just <coughs> Happy New Year to everyone. And I appreciate your speech. It was great. <coughs> I'm going to be attending a transportation policy board next Tuesday and uh, I I've got a two-part uh, response from my report has anyone here read the Greek Roman and Norse mythologies that's a rhetorical question um, not many people that I've met have read them uh, when I was nine and ten years old I gorged upon them <coughs> and I learned many things uh, in a very entertaining way. One of the best stories was Jason and the Argonauts. Jason found himself off the coast of Thrace, whose king was named Phineas. Jason went to Phineas to ask for his help. Phineas was in a terrible state. He had offended the gods. And Zeus, the king of the gods, loosed his hounds upon Phineas. These hounds, however, were not dogs. They were harpies, winged creatures with talons and face of human females. When Phineas sat down to eat, these creatures would swoop down, take, carry off all of his food, and then befoul his table. Jason gained the king's friendship by getting rid of the harpies. That's a very much shortened version of the actual tale. Um, so the first part of my report is finished, and I wanted you to, I wanted to be sure that you all knew what a harpy was. And now uh, there's an issue that I have that concerns me, and if that issue is not resolved, then I will be a harpy at city council meetings. And uh, since Jason is not here, no one's going to chase me away. Um, now, my second point is that when I see something in a report that disturbs me, I go to a person and ask that person um, to speak with them privately to see if we can resolve the issue. I have done so on the matter that now I'm now going to speak about. Mr. Mayor, you have uh, condoned the use of taxpayers' money to pay for lunch when you and the city manager have lunch together. Mr. Mayor, using taxpayer money uh, creates a very bad image and initiates a bad habit. It gives the appearance that you are chiseling away at the taxpayer uh, petty cash drawer. And that's a very bad image, Mr. Mayor, and I would not want to have my face attached to it. I have heard your argument, Mr. Mayor, that other mayors in other cities do the same thing that you are doing. Your line of reasoning, Mr. Mayor, is like a bucket with a hole in the bottom. It does not hold water. I have two suggestions, Mr. Mayor, that the 20 plus dollars that is in the expense report that's in front of us today, that that be deleted. The second is that I suggest that you add some sentences to the city policy that essentially state that when the mayor, uh, that no city money will be used to pay for lunch between the mayor and the city uh, manager. And that concludes my report. This is Martin. No report. Okay. Thank you, city attorney. City Manager? Uh, just a couple items. The, uh, I included a sign-up sheet in, the, uh, in your packet, and we'll be sending it out to different folks about the home show. It's coming up actually a month away, February 5th through the 8th, and we'll have a booth again. 
and so we're looking for volunteers and so uh, I included that so you can kind of look over your schedule and if you have some dates that will work it was in your packet um, then um, and if you didn't get a copy we'll be sending copies out so uh, look at your schedule and then we're also going to send it out to the different um, committees and such to see if they're interested and I wanted the citizens to know if they'd like to come and work at our booth uh, anybody certainly welcome so just get a hold of myself or Rick if that if, if somebody at home would like to go and and spend a couple hour shift representing Bel Air at our booth we're always happy to have volunteers for that and then the last thing is that the city offices will be closed on January 19th which is just before our next council meeting for uh, Martin Luther King Day and that's all I had mayor mm -hmm. mr. mayor yeah. what were the dates on the work in the booth uh, February 8th, 5th through the 8th is the date. And that's down at Century 2. Yes. No. And I had a question, yeah. Mr. Lasher. Could you remind us again the deadline for filing? I had someone um, send me a message if they want to run for an office. Is it the 24th of January? It's the 27th. 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 Okay. And we actually just put something on the <coughs> website today. Okay. Um, with and a it was in the breeze. I that saw. That goes to the uh, Sedgwick County with uh, talks about what the fees are and the deadlines and stuff like that. So they can. We just got it on today, so they can check our website. Oh, good. Thank and you. And then, um, and then check that way. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on to ordinances, resolutions, and final actions. Uh, the first thing under that for council uh, tonight is consideration of approving an agreement between uh, the cities of Bel Air and Wichita uh, regarding the uh, reconstruction of 37th Street between Oliver and Woodlawn. And this is something we've talked about for, for quite a while. It's part of the 2016 WAMPO plan. Um, basically, Wichita is doing, you know, we don't have the staff for money to, to do the engineering <coughs> that's necessary up front. Wichita is willing to do that now we're going to pay it back, um, you know, pay back our share, um, you know, over time with the when we special assess and everything out, and uh, or not special assess, but when how are we, you know, we'll pay back our fair share when it bonds bonded. I'm sorry, um, and I know Allison has looked this agreement over and approved it, and uh, that's before council tonight. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I make a motion to approve uh, the agreement with the City of Wichita for 37th Street reconstruction between Oliver and Woodlawn and authorize the mayor to sign. Second. Second. We have a first and second. Are there any questions or comments? Mr. Mayor. Yeah. I, I just want to say that uh, this is great that we were able to get a situation like this where we could partner with the City of Wichita. And, uh, I hope that this kind of starts a, a tradition of Wichita working cooperatively with the communities around them uh, to, to make projects like this happen because there's certainly roads and bike paths and all those types of things that improve connectivity between communities that I think is beneficial for all parties. So this is really exciting. Absolutely. And well, just driving through Bel Air, how many times has Wichita been on one side, Bel Air, and maybe in the county? You know, I mean, it, it all. So yeah, I would definitely echo with that. OK. We have a first and second. Any other questions or comments? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, next is a uh, another agreement. This is between uh, Bel Air and the Wichita YMCA Summer Day Camp Program. Uh, they've been coming over here for oh golly, is this, is it 14 years, yeah, yeah. years or so. Uh, basically, they kind of take over a room in the, uh, the the rec center that is available, and then they host a uh, day camp. And it is mostly Bel Air kids. And again, this is just something a formal agreement. Again, so everything, we're all legal and insured and all that good stuff. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Mr. Lee. I'll make a motion to approve the agreement with the Wichita YMCA Summer Day Camp Program and authorize the mayor to sign. Second. So we have first and second. Any other questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Moving right along is a change order with Kansas Paving to replace cracked sidewalks from Phase 1 of Tierra Verde. Um, this, uh, you know, it's just a change order with Kansas Paving, um, and it'll be spread as specials back to them. 
Mr. Mayor. Mrs. O'Donnell. I'd like to make a motion to approve the change order with Kansas Paving in the amount of $6,279 and authorize the mayor to sign. Second. First and second, I'm guessing there might be some questions here. <laughs> okay. Well, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Yeah. Start down there, okay? Uh, I'm thinking, don't we have an ordinance or resolution regarding broken sidewalks? And this might be a question for the attorney or Mr. Lasher. Yeah, in, in fact, um, that's right. Sidewalks are the, the, the uh, responsibility of the property owner. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, uh, the, the uh, Tierra Verde actually still own all the properties out there. And so um, the sidewalks that these run along are owned by them. And um, so that's where the decision was made to go ahead and pay for that um, and use some, some of the uh, bonding, bonding money and then it'll be spread as special assessments. now. Technically, when they sell those lots, then whoever takes over those lots would be responsible for some of that cost. But, but you're right. That's that's why uh, they requested that be done is because they're the property owner of all of that. Well, my next question is, uh, why isn't the property owner taking this? If they put in the sidewalks before the buildings were built, I don't think a kid or a man or a woman on a bicycle broke those sidewalks and it would be their responsibility i would like to suggest that maybe they split half of that cost with us because the problem is you keep adding these change orders back onto the property pretty soon those change orders are going to be higher than your house payments and we're going to have a hard time selling those homes when because i know when they first started central park and those people, they sent out letters so they could pay off their specials. And those people came in to pay those specials off. I about died when I found out what those specials were. I mean, they were expensive. And how a person can buy a house or build a house and pay the specials plus a mortgage, they're going to they're gonna be hurting. And pretty soon we're going to run out of a place here where they're going to say those specials are way too high if they're smart enough to ask what the specials are. Now, I know some of the people that came in in Central Park, they didn't ask what the specials were, but they sure had a fit, and I'm sure Mr. Lasher can verify when they came in with that letter, it was bad. So that's my concern of all of these, everything that seems to go back this the city's not paying for it but you're going to run into a problem here pretty soon people are not going to buy that house because of the special price now, i may be all gone but that's my feeling on it well uh, uh, mr mayor i actually <coughs> emailed mr lasher yesterday and asked him about this because i was kind of concerned about the same kind of questions and uh, uh, it certainly is a situation where you want to be careful about is it appropriate to pay who should be responsible for it and those types of things and I the one thing about this is is with where the prices are at my understanding from mr. Lasher is is although it will increase the cost of specials above what it might have been it still fits within the temporary funding that we had already allocated and that the developer had already agreed to so this isn't going to increase their based on my conversation this isn't going to increase the cost above what they had originally kind of budgeted for if that makes any kind of sense which makes me feel a little bit better I'm not wild about doing it this way but at the same time the developer is the one paying for it not the city the city won't pay for this in the long run so it's 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 always kind of difficult to know what to do but I, I was assured that it falls within the budget that's available for the project so well mr. mayor I still feel that she says should split the cost with us at half I'm going to look down here to see what <coughs> advice. We do have a first and second. Um, do we need to? Well, no, no, you're discussing. You yeah. Right. Yeah, we have a second. Have, have we, um, Mr. Lusher, even thought, I mean, ha have we even asked her anything about splitting it? 
or did she just ask for this and it came before us? Yeah, she. Um, what had happened was um, the uh, there were some panels that were cracked and like uh, Ms. Martine said, it wasn't people walking on, it was actual uh, probably utility trucks that were out there putting in the, um, the uh, electric lines or the gas lines. The problem is we didn't catch them doing it, so we can't say that West Star is responsible or Kansas Gas is responsible, but it was something big like that to break the sidewalk mm -hmm. that happened. And um, so they were the ones that were, um, re they requested that it be repaired and, and our staff said, well, uh, you know, do you want to pay for it, or do you, do you, you know, we we've got as Mr. Lee said, there's money within that budget that's because when they come in and 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 you all accept a petition that's saying that these improvements won't cost more than a certain dollar amount, and that they also see on their side the petition, then they can determine what their specials would be, worst cut, worst case <coughs> specials would be. So that's what Mr. Lee was saying, and, and so that was, um, so they requested that it be done that way. And so that's why it's before you um, the way it is with uh, it being spread in special assessments. So we didn't ask her, well, would you be willing to pay for some of that or anything? That was just her request. Have there been any other contractors out there beside the utilities, uh, West Star and the, and the gas people? Um, Yes, but um, water, sewer, streets, storm water, that was all going in at the same time. So we know it wasn't done in any of those because your sidewalk typically goes in the last when your streets are going in. And you have your water, sewer, storm water going before that. So it had to have been. Her contractor. Had, that's what it had to have been. I would, uh, I guess I have a question for the city attorney. <clears throat> Assuming that, that the uh, sidewalks are cracked and we can take pictures and show that, can we go after West Star and the people, uh, the other utilities who had their heavy equipment out there based on the fact that no other, no other contractors were there, no one else was able to crack these things, so therefore it's, we assume that uh, these, uh, this damage was done by their equipment. What you're, I, I think what you're asking about is can we civilly sue them? Yes. And, and if we have enough evidence to convince a jury that in fact this is who did it, uh, we're more sure than not, then there's a possibility. But when you're asking about litigation, uh, the amount of time it would take and the amount of investment to get there and what the exact outcome might be is always a guesstimate. Okay. It would have to be a jury trial? It, not necessarily, but. Uh, well, not necessarily. Would, there could be a plea agreement or any, any of those kinds of, of things that mm -hmm. could go or an agreement between the parties. But if it went all the way to the end, and it's the, expensive. the question <coughs> okay. is who can convince a jury of whatever. Mm -hmm. How much money are we talking about for the replacing the sidewalks? Uh, 62 Yeah, 6000 Oh, I'm sorry. That's yeah, right here. Okay. Mr. Well, Mayor. Question. Okay. Uh, even though uh, she's asked us to pay the 6200 why can't we go back and ask her to pay half of it? Because if the, like Mr. Lasher said, if the sewer and the water and the stormwater was already in, it, doesn't she have a contractor or somebody on site when this stuff is being worked on? That's a good question. The, the way I understand this is, you know, she came to us and asked us to pay up front, and then she's well aware that it's going to be spread back as special assessment. So this is no cost to the city. Right. And she knows what the cost is, and she's willing. She wants it done, and this is how she wants it paid for, and it, it's up to her to sell those. Uh, I, I certainly understand what you're saying with, mm -hmm. with this. But I, I think you're, you're, you're right on point, but it's what she requested and yeah. since it's no cost to the city i, I think you know right. we all kind of have concerns that maybe we think she should have but well, i have a yeah. question yeah um <coughs> my only concern this is on um as you come around that road correct that i was trying to my only thing is should we wait a while because isn't she starting on another building she said soon what's going to happen if those trucks come again the and they break thing. it again because of the way you know t t on that curve there right. 
I'm, I'm just wondering if this is premature. I don't mind doing it and spreading it back because it's well within the order. I'm just wondering if it's just premature. Um, actually, the, um, the water, sewer streets, electric and gas, everything is in for right. her 70 some acres she owns. So her next um, phase would have to go, you know how it, it's cul-de-sacs right there now, it would have to go on around, which is actually the property we own. So there shouldn't be any more. Um, she can construct on the other side there, right, of her yeah, own. But what would happen in that in. case would be um, they would need to access that lot. Um, and so they would have to do a curb cut and put a driveway approach in and that kind of stuff to actually then start utilizing that lot so they could build on it. So, so then it would be whoever owns that lot's responsibility, and typically that's what would happen. I know, I'm sure Mr. Lee knows, a lot of times on uh, residential houses, we do the same thing. We put in all the curb and guttering, and then when they bring in the stuff to build the house, it breaks the concrete. But the lot owner has to pay to right. replace the concrete. So that's what would happen there is, okay. is some kind of commercial building would go in. They'd have to drive over the concrete and break it. Because they're going to break it again if Yeah, they do but that. then it's their responsibility. Um, to pay for that, whoever that construction company is or the lot owner. Mr. Mayor, I agree with Peggy. I think it might be premature to fix the sidewalks because anything else you do, even if it's lawn work, because I've experienced this with my own property, they have to go across my property and my sidewalks to gain access to our common areas in our neighborhood. And one time the lawn people brought in a piece of big equipment and broke my sidewalk. So I asked the, them to pay for it. And I'm wondering, I mean, if we don't want to do litigation, which would be troublesome, why don't we just ask the utilities if they would pay for this damage? Well, we don't have to sue them, but right. you can ask them, you know. Well, I would say, I mean, this is not Bel Air property that we're talking about either, right? Actually, the sidewalks right. are in right away, so. Is that, right. So that's why, it's, it's, okay. Yeah. But they were already, the utilities had already been there from what I'm understanding from Mr. Lesher and already put in so it wouldn't be the utilities that we would go after this oh, would be her right? trucks well or her, I, con her contractors right. when I first read this my first thought is why were the sidewalks in there already you know it seems like they were in there prematurely I don't know who made that decision but it seems like there's going to be so much more construction lawn work and everything else that goes on out there uh, it seems like they were put in early, uh, to me anyway. No. Uh, I no. don't know all the facts, but. Well, unfortunately, it's, it's very common practice to put sidewalks in first, and the smart contractors will put dirt over the sidewalk before they drive on it so they don't crack it but the lazy contractors don't, and then they break it. And uh, I can assure you that based on my experience with West Star, AT&T, and Cox, that you can ask them all you want, and <laughs> you're not going to get a penny from them for those sidewalks. Uh, you'd be wasting your time. They, there's no way they would offer to pay. You would have to litigate to get But the money. we have an ordinance or a resolution against this, and I don't know yeah. uh, if I, that's still in effect <clears throat> or not, but... We don't uh, put the sidewalks in until after everything is already built. Is the well, this we is kind of a it. commercial area, which is a different beast mm -hmm. in itself uh, because it is commercial. But the other thing I wanted to say is uh, I wanted to ask Mr. Lasher is, is the cracking that's out there, I, I didn't see any pictures of it. Is it more of a nuisance at this point or is it a hazard? Is it to the point where the one question is, is given the fact that there can't be much pedestrian traffic is this something that could wait until a later point where it's more appropriate is that is that really workable at this point or is it bad enough cracking where we should be finding them for it and this is an avenue to get the problem taken care of where they'll be responsible for it so does that make sense yeah and that's and that's exactly right that that's again um, if 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 it was just some basic cracking uh, because of the weather um, then we typically do have some type of guarantee on concrete and so if it was that we could go back to the concrete company and say okay well the mix was bad or something and there's some cracking um, but what what the issue was it was that's how they they assume that it was a truck because it's major cracking and and it does get 
the, the, the cracking gets above what our ADA requirements are for trip hazards and that kind of stuff. And, and that's why our staff approached them and said, well, something needs to be, I mean, this is an ADA issue. <coughs> and again, like, like Mr. Lee said, it's not like there's any, probably any um, traffic out there as far as pedestrians. Mm -hmm. But um, um, if someone had a concern, you know, regardless if anybody's walking on it, they could come to us and say, hey, this is an issue. And then we would then, as Mr. Lee said, go to the property owner, say, you've got, because it is their responsibility, you've got to fix this. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what we did up front is said, okay, we've got this issue. Um, what do you want to do? And that's kind of how the, the discussion went to do oh. it this way. So it was really kind of initiated by the city. Yeah, because okay. we, they, when they were out there doing their inspections of the, the final um, phase, because it's in two phases, mm -hmm. uh, that's when they noticed the problem on those. And um, and that's where they came up with the, the thought that it had to be some big trucks because it was big cracks. It wasn't, you know, all of us have cracks in our concrete. It wasn't like that. It was mm -hmm. really. It was breakage. Yeah, big. Mr. Mayor, I have one more question. Is all of this 6,200, 6, is it on her property or is it her property that she's selling? Um, probably, probably all of it would be on her property that she owns, but that's for sale. It's for sale. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. This question, good questions. Um, do you have a first and second? Uh, for us to approve the change order again, this is the the owner's request. So, uh, we'll go ahead and <coughs> pardon me. Call for the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 No. Opposed? No. Okay. Next, we have two more change orders. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, the the first one is. Uh, 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 with dueling construction to l uh, change the lift station at Sunflower Commerce Park and basically this is to, to match that final grading and I, I think we kind of knew that this might be coming anyway just because I think you got to have the, the grade um, level I'm sure Mr. Lee can speak a lot more elegantly to that than I can but uh, we're looking at a uh, change order uh, in the amount of $1,200 Mr. Mayor. Yes. Make a motion to approve the change order with dueling construction in the amount of $1,200 and authorize the mayor to sign. Second. First and second. Are there questions or comments on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, next, our final item is a change order with Kansas paving. Uh, this eliminates a driveway approach in the Tierra Verde phase two. So this actually deduces, reduces <laughs> the amount. Okay. So uh, uh, yeah, kind of goes back and forth. Here, here we're saving $3,600 uh, of those specials. So that's before council tonight. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Mr. Lee. I'll make a motion to approve the change order with Kansas paving, deducting $3,647.44 from the project and authorize the mayor to sign. Second. second. We have first and second. Any questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Okay. Uh, next is a discussion and future issues. Uh, you probably enjoy December without a workshop, but uh, we do need to have one uh, in January. Uh, proposing uh, a week from tonight, uh, Tuesday the 13th. Does that work for everybody? Fine with me, Mayor. Fine with me. It's fine with me. I've got a transportation policy board, but that should be over by five, and I should be able to make the workshop. Okay. You want to set it at six o'clock? Seven o'clock? Six thirty? Six thirty on six thirty. Split the six thirty, okay. It doesn't matter. I that okay. was just on our Could you tell us something of the what the I uh, the uh, agenda items are gonna be on that workshop? Yes, I've got uh, we want to talk about marketing. Um, we're we're going to uh, in let's see January, I believe it's the end of February you'll have to make a decision on marketing of Central Park 
because we own that. So I've got two proposals. We'll, we'll review one in, in um, January and one in February so that you can ask questions of the marketing company, kind of see their proposals and be comfortable about making a uh, decision. Um, we're going to uh, we're making staff is suggesting some minor changes to our fee structure. So uh, I want you to look over the fees that we charge. And so that will be something to discuss. Um, and then uh, there's one other thing, I, but I, I can't remember what it was, but I think there was three items on there. Um, there was something else about marketing. There was, oh, uh, you know, we, the city offers uh, marketing incentives for new homes. And so we've collected some data about what other cities are doing. And um, so just as we're starting a new year, just talk about if that's something you want to uh, continue or whatever. So. And Mr. Mayor, yeah. uh, could I ask when is Wygan's contract up? That's up yeah, it'll be in February, uh, isn't it? February, okay. and so in it, at the February workshop uh, in January, in January you'll hear one from one company that's interested, and then in in February you'll hear one from Wygan, and then you can kind of discuss kind of what you want to do because I think it's up the twenty something of February, so it'd be a, a decision you'd make <coughs> second meeting in February. Thank you. You bet. Anything else come before council tonight? I have no need for an executive session. <clears throat> One thing left then. Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Martin. I move to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned.